Hi, I'm going to show you how to do problem 322 from Wiley Plus using Excel for help. So here we have our uh, problem right here. Uh, hot rolled steel tension test specimen has a diameter of 6 millimeters and a gauge length of 30. Uh, we're testing tensile fracture here and we want to find these few things. Modulus elasticity, proportional limit, ultimate strength. Uh, yield strength today we're only going to focus on the 0.2 percent offset uh, the fracture stress and the true fracture stress the final diameter of specimen is 4.54 millimeters so here we have Excel uh, and I've kind of prepared a little bit we want to put in our givens which will be the diameters and the length and here we have the things we want to find so first step let's take six millimeters 4.54 millimeters and 30 millimeters and plug them in for these things now we can just type these in uh, like so hit enter when you're done typing in each thing <clears throat> so with those put in there now uh, we can just kind of be cheaty and highlight all this stuff the uh, data from the actual test that we're looking at hit control C to copy and then we can just come over here and paste it in Excel and it already separates it into uh, nice columns for you but uh, we want one continuous column of this data so what I'm gonna do is highlight these numbers and then click on the border and just drag it down and plop it there now I can get rid of these headers and now we have our data all in nice columns and everything uh, so first thing we want to do I'm gonna put uh, this column over here so I can make a column for stress just type that in here and the stress will be in megapascals now in order to do uh, uh, calculate get Excel to calculate the stress for this whole column we need to input an equation we start that with the equal sign and stress remember is force per area and uh, our, our force here is in kilonewtons but we need it in newtons so we're going to multiply by a thousand when we do that and we need to divide by the area which this is a round circular bar so it would be pi on four times that uh, so I'm just going to type this in. So our load, if I just click or left arrow to the cell I want as our load, uh, it's A11 there, and we need to multiply by a thousand. So type in uh, star times a thousand, which means times a thousand. Then divided is a slash. Now everything in the denominator has to be in parentheses, or it won't be uh, computed correctly. So open parentheses and we need pi on 4. So pi needs to be entered like this. And pi is a function in Excel, which means it needs uh, open and close parentheses right after it. Put another divide sign times uh, divide by 4. Put times. And now we need to come up for our original diameter, which was 6 here. So I'll click on that box. And what I'm going to do here is press F4 which will put dollar sign in front of the B and a dollar sign in front of the 2 and I'll explain that in a second then I do close parentheses and press enter now what I can do is click on that box and uh, there's a couple ways to do this the first way I'll show you is uh, there's a square down here on the right hand side of the box so we can click on and drag down and uh, forgot something <laughs> you gotta square that uh, radius or that diameter like so <laughs> then we can redrag that stuff down like so and that looks better and don't forget to square your diameter here and you will get the wrong numbers <laughs> so now uh, we can do it that way or we can just double click on that little square and it has the same effect if we're right next to another column it will automatically copy what's in this cell downwards to the end of the column uh... let me switch to sheet two here and show you uh... 
what that dollar sign thing does. So basically the dollar sign thing, if I put an equal sign here and select a box, let's do C3. See that the value of this box copies that box. Now if I drag this over, I'm going to get all these letters copied like so. <clears throat> and if I don't want that, let's say I want to uh, keep the first cell. So I press F4 and I put a dollar sign C dollar sign 3 and no matter where I drag this then that will keep that first box. And if I drag them all down it'll lock it to that box. So whatever thing the dollar sign is in front of means that variable is the one that's locked. Um, so you can do it lock it to a column or lock it to a row uh, if you put the dollar sign just in front of the letter or the number. But as far as this example goes, we're just going to do the two dollar signs, one in front of the letter and one in front of the number, to basically make that a, a static variable that we use throughout our sheet, like the diameter was over here. We don't want, when we drag this down, we don't want the box to follow, otherwise it'll not make any sense. We want it to be stuck on that uh, one initial uh, diameter input cell. Uh, so now we need a column for strain. The strain is going to be in meters per meter or millimeter per meter since we're working with uh, millimeters in this one but they're the same exact number. So I'll put that in and strain is uh, the change in length or elongation over here C11 divided by the original length and this is another variable that we've input so I click B4 up there and now I'm going to press the F4 key and get that dollar sign dollar sign thing in there hit enter now I'll click on that cell again and I'll double click the box so now we have a column of strains here at the end the fracture one doesn't really matter we're not going to plot that point <clears throat> now if we look at things we want we want one of them is F fracture stress and we've already calculated uh, fracture stress this happens to be the engineering fracture stress so I'm just going to put in that value already right here so we have one answer already fracture stress 487 megapascals now that's the engineering fracture stress. If we want the true fracture stress, we need to use the diameter of the bar at fracture. And that uses the 4.54 instead of the 6. So to recalculate that, I'll do equals. Uh, we need our load at fracture, which is the 13.77 kilonewtons. Times that by 1,000. Divide by pi divided by 4 times final fracture here don't forget to square it like that and that gives us our true fracture stress which is 850.6 megapascals here now I didn't bother doing the uh, dollar sign trick here uh, because I'm not copying the cell anywhere but if you want to be extra cautious about that you can put dollar signs in here so you can move the cell uh, copy its contents wherever. <clears throat> now we've done that. Uh, the next easiest one to do is the ultimate strength. The ultimate strength is just the maximum strength that uh, shows up on the stress strain graph. And an easy way to do that here is to do equals max, put a open parenthesis. Now this will find the maximum value from a uh, column if we highlight an entire column so I'm going to highlight the stress column like so and then I'll do close parenthesis and I'll automatically search through this list and find the maximum value which you can do by sight because there's not that many here but this is just an easy way to get the value up here it turns out to be 500 and 
85.3 megapascals. So that one's done. Now for the rest of them, we really should insert a graph in here so we can get a visual idea of what's going on. So to put in a graph, I'm going to come up here to the menu bar, click insert. I'm going to choose a scatter plot and I'll do this uh, uh, scatter with smooth lines. Now Excel thinks it's being helpful by automatically selecting things for you, but it's not. Uh, so we're going to come in here. I made the window a little larger by dragging on it. And get rid of this legend here. And the title doesn't make sense. <laughs> so delete those. Click on them. Hit the delete key. Gets rid of them. What I need to do is I need to right click on this data area and click select data. Now come over here. It's not what I want. So I'm going to click on this guy and click remove. Now what I need to do is click uh, add here. So I'm going to add a new series. And I'll write the name as stress versus strain. Oops. Don't press an arrow while you're doing this. You need to use the mouse if you make a mistake. So series X values, that's strain. I'm just going to plot this. Series Y values, that's stress. I'm just going to take the same here, um, ignoring the last point and press enter. Hit OK. And now we see we have our stress strain diagram over here. Uh, so we have the elastic region here on the left, uh, area of leveling out and strain hardening. We reach a point of necking. Our ultimate tensile strength is here. Uh, the way the data works in this problem puts in this funky little uh, jump here, but don't worry about that. And then over here we go till the almost fracture point. So next what we want to do, uh, the first thing to look for, the easy thing to look for would be the proportional limit. And that's just the point on the graph where uh, the uh, linear behavior of the elastic region stops. Now you might be like, well, I can't really see that very well. So we're going to zoom in. And the way we do that, at least in Excel, is we need to adjust the limits on our axes. So what I'm going to do is right click on the X axis and the menu thing comes up, click format axis. Now here we have minimum maximum. I'm going to change the maximum. So I click this fixed radio button here and I'm going to change this to uh, 0.01. So that lets me zoom in really close to what's going on here. Now I'm going to zoom in on the Y axis as well, just because we have this free space and I'll put the maximum to 400. So that'll pretty much let me see what's going on. And now we can clearly see there's a point on here where linearity stops and it's right here. So if I hover my mouse over this point, it'll pop up with a little uh, alt text type thing and tell me that that point is 276 megapascals. So I can just come over here uh, where my data was. I see my 276 point. I'm going to drag through this and just highlight it with a on an intrusive color just so I can remember. But then I'll come up here, proportional limit, hit equals, click on that guy. And it's the proportional limit. So now we, what we want to do is find modulus of elasticity. There's a couple of ways we can do this. The easiest way is to take, uh, you know, use Hooke's law. Uh, the modulus of elasticity is stress over strain for a point in the uh, elastic region. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use the proportional limit. Do equals uh, stress at that point divided by the strain at that point right here. That's why I highlighted it so I could find it later. So that gives me 207.116 uh, gigapascals. Uh, it's in megapascals here. I'm going to leave it that way just for calculation's sake. But when you want it, when you enter it in the Wiley Plus, it's going to want gigapascals. 
So you notice this value is a little different than that value. And one of the reasons is because they, another this this will do you fine for this problem. But another way you can do this is do a linear fit. In the uh, the function for that in Excel is line st. I think it stands for uh, linear statistics. So we type equals line st open parentheses. Now it wants us to put in our known y's. So those are the stresses. I'm going to highlight all the stresses up to the proportional limit. Then I type a comma and it wants the known x's. So I will highlight all the strains up to the proportional limit. Then I can just hit enter and the value it puts in here, 207 uh, gigapascals. Uh, you know, it's pretty close to our estimate, but it is a little closer to what Wiley Plus is expecting. Uh, it's just off by six. I don't know what numbers exactly they were using, but they're not quite the same as ours. And it's such a small difference that it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> so the hardest part of this problem is finding this 0.2% yield strength offset. Uh, and the easiest way to do this is to just start with a new column of strain and this will be a calculated stress at 0.2% offset. I'm going to do a little formatting uh, thing here just to get this looking okay. So what I want to do for our strain values is I just want to input some generic strain values. So I'm going to put 0, then I'm going to do 0 0.001, 0 0.02, 0 0.03. Now once you have a few in here, you can just drag, uh, select all these. And then if I drag it down, it'll automatically give me a whole bunch of strain values that you know, increment by themselves. So we only really need, we don't need this many, but I'm going to put them in there. Then what we want to do for this calculated stress at 0.2% offset thing is remember the uh, line that we're using for 2% offset will have the same slope as the elastic region. Now that implies uh, the slope is the Young's modulus. So we just need to use Hooke's law again. And remember that stress equals Young's modulus by strain. So that's just equal sign. Our Young's modulus up here, I'm going to use the linear one it doesn't really matter click on that press F4 to lock that in place and then multiply by strain here and then I can just copy that down so now I have values of uh, uh, stress that we can use for our uh, intersecting line now what I need to do I need to make a column strain plus point oh Two, to make the offset so what that is so I'm going to come down here hit equals I'm going to select the strain uh, a cell from the strain column and then add 0 0.002 to that then I'm going to copy that down and essentially what that has done is added 0 0.002 or 0.2 percent strain to this whole column now what we want to do is right click on here do select data and we're going to add our uh, intersecting line for the 0.2% strain offset. So select X values and that's our new column of strain plus 0.002. And select Y values, that's our calculated stresses. Hit OK. Now we can see we have a red line here. It starts at 0.002, has the same slope as our elastic region and up here it intersects the graph at really the flat portion of the line uh, so what I want to do is to get that value I'm just gonna mouse over the blue line so I see series stress versus strain is what I named it and uh, the value of stress is 378.4 uh, megapascals so I'm going to type that in And there we have it. That's pretty much the uh, the entire problem done. Now Wiley Plus has a problem where it thinks these two values should be 
the same. In practice, they aren't, but Wiley Plus is expecting them to be. So uh, for your problem, just type in 378.4 again. Now if we go back over to the problem, we can see the answer wants 378.4. So let's check how we did. Elastic modulus, 207 gigapascals. Yep. Proportional limit, 276 megapascals. Yep. Ultimate strength, 585. Yep. Yield strength, 378. Uh, see, and it wants the same for both of them. And then fracture stress, 487. And then the true fracture stress, 850.6. So it looks like we did really well. <clears throat> now, let me just show you what that other line looks like. It, it's pretty easy to put on there. You don't have to do much. Uh, except add, like I did here, add 0 0.002. Instead, I'm going to add to the original strain 0.0005. Like so. Copy that down. Then I can just come over here, select data, add a series, select that new string column, and then select the uh, calculated stress, hit OK. Now you can see where the problem comes in with Wiley Plus. I've got uh, this point here. It really is significantly lower than uh, the 378. Goes down to, uh, where we go? about 350 which would intersect at this point and so uh, as far as this problem goes that part of it's kind of broken you can still do it but if you actually put in this 350 for the answer you're probably gonna get it wrong uh, I've tried complaining to Wiley Plus about this uh, to no avail they say it's close enough and for most of the data sets it is but in this example it isn't uh, but just remember, they want the same answers, so just put the same in that you found for the 2.2% yield strength. And uh, that should do it. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.